so this is calculus two problem session seven two. So section eight point three. Look at some of the homework. Five, seven, nine. Let me do number nine. So I did some of these this morning also. So number nine, we have the integral of sine cubed x. Cosine squared x dx. So when you have a product of powers of sines and cosines, you're in good shape if one of the powers is an odd integer. Three is an odd integer. And if I want to write that as sine squared x times sine x, that's sine cubed, times cosine squared x. And then I want to write sine squared x is one minus cosine squared. That's the basic trig identity. And the reason is if I make the substitution u equal cosine x, du is minus sine x dx. And that's what I have here except for the minus sign. So if I put in a minus sign, this is minus Cosine is u, so one minus u squared times u squared du. So this is the integral of minus u squared plus u to the fourth or u to the fourth minus u squared du. So that's pretty simple. Right? So the idea was <clears throat> I want to make a substitution u equals cosine x. So that gives me sine x dx as the differential. And sine squared is one minus cosine squared. And this is just u to the fifth over five minus u cubed over three plus a constant. So we get cosine to the fifth of x over five minus cosine cubed of x over three plus a constant. Can you explain um, the step that's on line, like in between lines three and four? Uh, from here to here? Sorry, from, from that line to the next one. Yeah, from oh, that yeah. line to the next one. Yeah. So I have this integral. I make the substitution u equal cosine x. So this becomes one minus u squared times u squared and sine x dx is minus du. Where if I substitute u equal cosine x, derivative du dx is minus the sine. So du is minus sine x dx. And I get from here to here. And this is just, you know, this is u squared minus u to the fourth when I distribute but with a minus sign in front. So it makes it u to the fourth minus u squared. Okay, I didn't understand because I couldn't like tell what like a letter or like what like exponent stuff that was mm -hmm. okay thank you okay now let's see let's look at number 17. Um, yeah. numbers 17 is the integral of x times sine squared x dx. And the problem is we don't have any simple substitution to get rid of this sine of x. But the book says um, in section 8.3, when 
you have an even power of the sine or the cosine, you use the following trig identity. So you remember sine squared x minus cosine squared x. This is the cosine of 2x. That's a trig identity. And cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. So this minus this is 2 sine squared x minus 1 equals cosine 2x. So if you take this solve for sine squared x, sine squared x is 1 plus the cosine of 2x over 2. And we can take that and plug that in for sine squared x. So this is the integral of x, 1 plus the cosine of 2x over 2 dx. And here we have two integrals. The first is just the integral of a half x dx plus a half the integral of x times the cosine of 2x dx. x, the integral of x is just x squared over 2, so this gives 1 fourth x squared. And this we can get by doing integration by parts. So let me just indicate how that's done. If we have the integral of x cosine 2x dx, if we make this x and this cosine 2x, the derivative of x is 1, and the integral of cosine of 2x is a half sine of 2x. So by integration by parts, this is a half x sine of 2x minus the integral of a half times the sine of 2x dx. And the integral of the sine is the cosine. So we get a half x sine of 2x plus the integral of sine of 2x would be minus a half cosine of 2x. And minus a half times minus a half is a fourth cosine of 2x. So we take that, plug it in there, and we're done. So, you know, sometimes you have to use a multiplicity of techniques to solve a problem in calculus. So this not very complicated looking integral is still pretty complicated. We use this identity that relates the sine squared to just the cosine. And we get two integrals, and the first we can do instantly, and the second we use integration by parts. Now, section 8.4 is the method of trigonometric substitution. Sometimes you can look at some complicated integral and um, it somehow indicates you, that it's worth trying to introduce a trig function, to substitute something for a trig function and work the problem like that. So what you have to remember are the integration and differentiation formulas for the inverse trig functions. So if you have the arc sine of x, the derivative from calc one is one over the square root of one minus x squared. So that means the antiderivative formula, the integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared is arc sine x. The derivative of the arc tangent is one over x squared plus one.
which means that the integral of one over x squared plus one or one plus x squared is going to be the arctangent. The formula that no one remembers is for the derivative of the arc secant. And the derivative of the arc secant of x is one over x times the square root of x squared minus one. So this gives us the integration formula. The integral of one over x times square root of x squared minus one is the arc secant. And all of these formulas, if you forget them, are on the inside front cover of your book, there's a whole list of differentiation rules and integration formulas. So let's take a look at some of these problems. 8.4, number five. This is the integral of one over 16 minus x squared to the power three halves dx. So if you want, you can think of this as one over the square root of 16 minus x squared. That's 16 minus x squared to the one half cubed dx. And this part is of this general form, except you have a 16 instead of a one. But what this suggests is you might make the substitution u equal four sine x. In fact, the book tells you make the substitution u equal four sine theta. So in that case, u squared is 16 sine squared theta. And 16, oops, uh, just to have the same letters, right? So I make the substitution x equal four sine theta. So x squared is the square of that 16 sine squared theta, 16 minus x squared is 16 minus 16 sine squared theta. If you factor out the 16, it's one minus sine squared theta, one minus sine squared is the cosine squared. If x is four sine theta, dx is four cosine theta d theta. So if you make these substitutions, what do you have? You have the integral, sorry. So 16 minus x squared is this. So the square root of 16 minus x squared is the square root of this is four cosine theta. So what we have is one over four cosine theta squared, sorry, cubed, and dx is four cosine theta d theta. So that's four cosine theta, four cubed is 64 cosine cubed theta d theta. This is equal 
to one over 16, the integral of one over cosine squared theta d theta. One over the cosine is the secant, so this is secant squared theta d theta. And the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared, so the integral of the secant squared is tangent theta, plus a constant. And what is theta? X is four sine theta. So sine theta is X over four. So theta is the arc sine of X over four. So we get one over 16. The tangent of the arc sine of X over four and we can simplify this, but I'm not going to because it's just a little excursion into trigonometry at this point. For our answers on the test, do you want us to fully simplify or once we find the integral? Once obviously. you get the answer, you can stop. Okay. So for this part of calculus, you do need to know the, all the trig that is taught in pre-calc. Let's see, what's the next trig substitution problem? That was number seven. Well, let me do number 11. So number 11 is the integral of x cubed times the square root of x squared minus 25 dx. And again, we're, t we're, we're being told what to substitute. We're told to let x equal five times the secant of theta. So x squared is 25 minus, sorry, so x squared is 25 secant squared theta, just squaring this. X squared minus 25 is 25 secant squared theta minus 25. That's 25 times secant squared theta minus one. So let's just remember what the, there's an identity involving the secant. It comes from the fundamental identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. If you divide by the cosine, you get tangent squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. So secant squared theta minus one is the tangent squared. So that's what this is. So X squared minus 25 is 25 times the tangent squared of theta so the square root of x squared minus 25 is five times the tangent of theta. What is the derivative of the, of, uh, the secant? So if we take dx d theta, the derivative of the secant is the secant times the tangent. So now when we substitute everything into our initial integral, this is the problem we wanna solve. So the integral of X cubed times the square root of X squared minus 25 DX, X is equal to five secant theta cubed. The square root of x squared minus 25 is five times the tangent of theta and dx is five secant theta tangent theta d theta integral. So I have lots of powers of five, five cubed times five times five, I have five to the fifth. The integral of secant 
to the fourth, because here's secant cubed and here's secant. And tangent times tangent is tangent squared theta d theta. So now it's not obvious that this trigonometric integral is any easier or harder than the one we started. But if you remember, secant squared, we can write in terms of the tangent. Um, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. Let's see. Um, what can we do with that? Well, let's see, we know that the tangent squared is secant squared minus one. Mm -hmm. Is that? So we have a multiplicity of choices because we have secant and tangent both to even powers. So So let me write this like this. This is secant squared theta is secant to the fourth times secant squared theta times tangent squared theta d theta. And secant squared is tangent squared theta plus one times tangent squared theta secant squared theta d theta. So if I make the substitution, u equal tangent theta, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. So if I make this substitution, I get five times the integral of u squared plus one times u squared du. So this is five times the integral of u to the fourth plus u squared. And this is just a polynomial, I can integrate that and replace u with tangent theta and replace theta with something in terms of x. So there's a certain amount of working back, but that's how we set up and solve the problem. So these are a lot harder problems probably than you saw in Calc 1, but now you're in Calc 2. Are there questions about these? I mean, these are complicated problems. No, I don't really have any questions about these ones. Let me try another one. So this is still 8.4, number 29. And this is the integral of the square root of one minus x squared over x to the fourth dx. So because of this, we might try letting x equal the sine of theta. Let's see what happens. So one minus x squared is one minus sine squared 
theta. So the square root of that is the square root of one minus sine squared is, this is cosine, that's the square root of cosine squared theta. So that's the cosine of theta. And dx is cosine theta d theta. So if we substitute, we get this square root is cosine theta x to the fourth is sine to the fourth of theta, dx is cosine theta d theta. So what we have is the integral of cosine squared theta over sine to the fourth theta d theta. Hmm. Let's see, I can write this as cosine squared theta over sine squared theta one over sine squared theta d theta. And this is the cotangent squared of theta. And this is the cosecant squared of theta. Let's see. Well, that's true, but I'm not sure that's going to be so helpful for us. Um, <laughs> Maybe instead, I should use the identities that the book emphasizes for cosine squared theta and sine squared theta. So I had worked out a moment ago that sine squared theta is one plus cosine two theta over two. And similarly, cosine squared theta is one minus the cosine of two theta over two. So if we were to use these identities here, let's see if that helps us at all. We would get the integral of cosine squared theta, one minus cosine of two theta over two, divided by sine to the fourth, that's one plus cosine two theta over two squared d theta. So that's one minus cosine two theta, over one plus cosine two theta squared. This is a half over four, this is two d theta. Okay, well, I need a better way to do this one. Let's see. I started off by letting x equals sine theta. So what's in the numerator is just cosine theta. 
And what's in the denominator is cosine to the fourth theta times cosine theta d theta. So that's cosine squared over sine to the fourth. This is one minus sine squared. So that gives me something involving cosecants. What's a good way to do this? Professor, in the book, yeah. it says you use cotangent squared and cosecant squared. Uh, let's see. For 8.4, number 29. Yep. Where does it say that? Um, well, it's, it's in the answer key. It says right after you get cosine theta times cosine theta d theta over sine theta uh, over sine uh, to the fourth theta. Right, that's this. Yeah, it says that is equal to cotangent squared theta times cosecant squared theta. Right, that's what I did. And I erased that one. Oh, and they're just saying, okay, let's take a look. Where do I'm you not sure how they, answer key? I'm not sure how they uh, get that. Oh, they have the I answer key. I that down and erased it. So that's, um, that's exactly the following. This is cosine, so cosine to the fourth is sine squared times sine squared and cosine squared d theta. So this is the integral of cosine theta over sine theta squared and one over sine theta squared d theta. So this is exactly the cotangent of theta and this is the cosecant of theta all squared d theta. And we remember the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared the derivative of the secant is tangent times uh, uh, tangent times secant. The derivative of the cosecant is minus cotangent theta secant theta. But here I have that squared. Uh, so they're saying let u equal cotangent theta cosecant theta. No, they didn't do a substitution. They just went from there, and then they just straight up took the integral of that. I mean, this. Um, right. yeah. So they it was like cotangent squared times cosecant squared. Right. That's what this is. Yeah, and then they just took the integral of that. And sorry. And then they what? They just took the integral of that. I understand. And then they wrote down the answer. And then they put back put put x back in. Well, wh what is written after this? What is the next line and what you're looking at? The next line is that is equal to one third cotangent to the third theta plus C. One third cotangent of theta. Sorry, cubed. negative, negative one third, negative one third. Yes, okay. So. So if we have the, let's take a look. So if you have cotangent cubed, cotangent yep. of theta cubed, if you differentiate that, you get three times the cotangent of theta squared times the derivative of the cotangent Oh, that's right, okay. Uh, which is the cosecant, which is minus the cosecant of theta cubed. So you get minus three sorry. The derivative of the cotangent of theta cubed, that's three times 
the cotangent of theta squared times the derivative of the cotangent, which is minus the cosecant of theta squared. Okay, so that's exactly what this is. So this is minus three times cotangent of theta cubed. And then we have to write cotangent of theta in terms of x. So the Professor, cotangent- why is, why is it negative three? Wouldn't you divide by three since you're doing the integral? Um, sorry, it's negative because the derivative of the um, cotangent is minus the C is minus cotangent times cosecant. Yes, minus a third. Yeah, okay. Okay. But the question is, how do we get from the cotangent of theta back to sine theta? So this is minus a third. The cotangent is the cosine cubed over sine cubed. And cosine It is the square root of one minus sine squared theta. So it's one minus sine squared theta to the three halves over sine cubed theta. And now we get exactly minus a third, one minus x squared to the three halves over x cubed. So I guess the idea was to recognize that the cotangent of theta cubed has a derivative, which is essentially that. Yeah, oh, that's good. I like that problem. So do you have a book that actually has solutions to the problems in the text? Well, it's, it's given in the book. It is? I, have a, I, have an, I have an online copy that gives us a website. Oh, that no basically, I didn't uh, even know So you can was, check your answers. Wow, I didn't even know there was an online copy of the book. Is that cheaper than, it must be cheaper than buying the book uh, hardcover or softcover. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, I, okay. I got it for free, actually. All right, no, that's good. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Um, if we just, can we keep doing these like trig ones? Cause they're like, I always have a hard time with them. So I feel like just seeing more practice is better. Let's see, which one was this? This was number 29. So the next one was 29.35. So 8.4 number 35 is the integral of e to the 2x times the square root of 1 plus e to the 2x dx. So it seems to me the first step would be to make a nice substitution, u equal 1 plus e to the 2x. Because then du dx is 2e to the 2x. So du is 2e to the 2x dx, or 1 half du is e to the 2x dx. So if I substitute, I have, this is the integral of square root of u, 1 half du. Oh, so for this, there's no trigonometry at all. This is 1 half two-thirds u to the three halves plus a constant. So this is one-third, one plus e to the two x to the three halves plus a constant. So I did not use to need, I did not need any trigonometry there at all. That's pretty good. Let's see, seven, nine, 11, 13. 
Let me do number 15. Number 15 is the integral of one over one plus x squared dx. And it tells us to make the substitution x equal tangent theta. Now, one plus x squared then is one plus tangent squared theta, which is secant squared theta, which is one over the cosine squared of theta. Dx is secant squared theta d theta. So when I substitute for dx, I get secant squared theta d theta over this denominator, which is secant squared theta squared. So this is the integral of one over secant squared theta d theta, which is the same as the integral of cosine squared theta because one over the secant is the cosine. So let's just double check that this is okay. Uh, that x equal the tangent, one plus x squared is one plus tangent squared is secant squared. Dx is secant squared theta d theta. So I get secant squared over secant to the fourth, that's one over secant squared. That's the integral of the cosine squared. And I guess for that, I use the fact that this is one minus cosine of two theta over two. So I get the integral of a half, which is a half theta, minus one half, the integral of cosine of two theta, d theta. And the integral of the cosine is minus the sine. So this is one half theta plus a half times a half sine, sine of two theta. So this is a half theta plus a fourth times the sine of two theta, which is a half plus a fourth sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. So I have my integral is equal to a half theta plus a half sine theta cosine theta. And what I need to do is somehow replace, write this in terms of x. So theta is the inverse tangent, the arctangent of x. Um, and I could play around a little bit if I wanted to, but so theta is arctangent of x. Let me just substitute that into these places and out will come a result. Yeah. Can you explain how you went from cosine squared theta to like, like the next like previous steps from after that? Here? Yeah, like just like the next like three steps. All right, well, I, I missed so it. again, I had worked out earlier and used these formulas, cosine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine two theta over two. So you can use, and sine squared theta is one plus cosine two theta over two. So you can use these to reduce the degree of a sine or a cosine. So, so this expression is cosine squared theta. And just to be clear, that expression that you just circled is one minus cosine two theta over two? Yes. Okay, okay. And then this is two integrals. It's the integral of a half minus a half times the integral of cosine of two theta. And the integral of one with respect to theta is theta. And the integral of the cosine is minus the sine. So I'm just integrating one and I'm integrating the cosine. And those are pretty straightforward. All right, thank you. All right, that's it for today, I believe. Um, we have one more problem session 
tomorrow morning before the exam. And I am available certainly at that time. Okay, thank okay. you, Professor. Any other questions? Anyone else? Okay. Not, uh, hope to talk to you tomorrow. Bye.